Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, Joe, Joe just asked me to explain what I do step by step, and that I shall. Um, I'm going to get started here with uh, the first game I'm going to do is uh, my copy of Ultima 7, which uh, I have not imaged before. Um, here's my box. I'm, I'm real proud of my box on Ultima 7. <coughs> Excuse me. It's hard to find an Ultima 7 box that's not rubbed to crap. And uh, I happen to have a good one here. And uh, I'm going to go through the... I'll do just like I did last time. I'll go through the what I have in here uh, before I get started. But here's my, my discs, which I still have the um, paper uh, doodilly around the disc there. It's actually kind of hard to find a copy of the game with, with that paper deal. Uh, people usually threw those things away. Um, <clears throat> so those are the discs I'll be imaging here. And then I got my little uh, uh, trinket guy there. I got my got my fellowship manual here. Uh, where am I supposed to put this stuff? This is another thing that's hard to find in an Ultima Seven box is the Ultima Underworld demo disc, which uh, had a hard and uh, also the uh, the sheet that came with it. So. <clears throat> If you find one with that disc, you're you're doing good. Uh, the first release of Ultima 7 had the 92 catalog in it, the bovine one. Um, you got the install guide. You got the player reference card. Uh, the advertisement for the the uh, strategy guide. Uh, disc exchange form. This is all the really exciting stuff. <clears throat> origin registration card um, another thing that's hard to get your hands on is the uh, the printout of the ad that's that was taped to the back of the box <clears throat> uh, I got a beautiful uh, strategy guide for this one that doesn't look like it was hardly ever read uh, and I got my uh, cloth map and that's all I got in there uh, the only thing I'm missing, Joe, Joe said that's a very complete copy, which is true. There's most of it, but I'm still missing that damn uh, uh, read me first sheet. It's the only thing I ain't got. And those things are hard to find. Uh, most copies don't have those, which would lead me to believe that they probably didn't put them in every copy because there's so many copies out there that don't have them for whatever reason. Uh, I will not be imaging the uh, Ultima Underworld disc because this computer that I'm doing this on does not have a five and a quarter drive unfortunately so I'm gonna put all this stuff back in there and then take this out of the bag and we'll get started um, making disk images is uh, pretty pretty simple uh, I download a shareware program called win image um, this uh, this copy's got a forge of virtue disk in it too which is good I'll I'll do that too So, we'll start with disc one here. Uh, make sure, oh, uh, this is something Jim uh, stressed last time, and I'll stress it again. Before you put a disc in your drive, make sure that sucker is right protected. Make sure you can see through that tab, because um, Microsoft Windows will put hidden files on the disc. And those will then be on your disc image, and you won't have a pure copy. So, shut up, Stuart. Stuart says this is absolutely thrilling. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming he logged into this to troll me. Number one, I think we'd be best off to our next mission. I don't think that makes... I don't understand what that means. Oh, number one, like in Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. <clears throat> Alright, uh, once you put the disc in the drive, uh, you're going to... There's a button up here that, if you see where my mouse is at the moment, you're going to see it's uh, read the disc up here. And you just hit that. And while this is going, I'm going to be adding another window because I have to do it after I'm live that shows the percentage. So uh, hold tight while I do that for here for the first time. Uh, here we go. I'm going to start reading the disc. Uh, pray to whatever PC gods that uh, we don't have any drama. This is like my favorite game, so. No drama. <clears throat> I'm working on that window right now. Window capture. Um, 
<clears throat> that one. And I'll try to make it real big so you can really read it. I know it's on, I know it's on that side there, but this way you can actually see the percent. Uh, Stuart asks what software I was using the live stream. This is OBS, Open Broadcasting Software, um, which is free and it's like mega powerful. Yeah, it's a shame my uh, three and a half inch drive. Uh, Joe just said uh, he thought that he was going to be able to hear the drive running, which is kind of a shame that you can't hear. Maybe I should pipe in like fake drive sounds or something. Eighty-seven percent. We're rocking and rolling on this one. I have good faith in these particular discs because I think I've installed. Joe, check it out. Uh, this is another one that's got the PK unzip in the. U7 disk and all that stuff. And install PK and zip and U7 disk zero zero. So that must have been they must have been really doing this about that time. Uh, so anyway, now that it's red and you've got hundred percent on the read, you there's a button up here the it's simple, just there's a save button, you hit save. And uh, where'd that window go? Here it is. And then you just you just name it something. Um, I'll put it in a folder. Floppy images. Ultima seven seven uh, three point three. I put three five because I keep my five and a quarter, my three five disk separate. And I use the uh, file format IMA. I don't use the compressed one because I don't. I just don't like the idea that that the images are compressed for whatever reason. <clears throat> uh, this is just the first disc so far. Joe asked how many I've done so far. Stewart said this is clearly a forgery, and he would he would know. So uh, I guess my Ultima Seven is a uh, fake. Uh, we'll go disc one, and then hit save, and that's it for that one. We pull that one out, and we go to disc. We're on disc two. Double check that it's copy protected. go open you hit open disk <clears throat> then we watch and see if it screws up I had a lot of drama last time I um Stewart says it seems like an opportune time to say RIP Phil Katz who could not compete with WinZip and I believe committed suicide what I actually have another copy of Ultima 7 Joe. Joe says when you start doing other copies you can archive different releases. I have the uh, um, complete Ultima 7 that came in the Serpent Isle box. So I'll, when I do that one I'll put it label each image I mean. Yeah I'll uh, put them, I keep them separate each different release. <clears throat> Phil Katz was the guy who invented PK and Zip, which I'm assuming PK would stand for Phil Katz. Huh. Alright, no drama on that disc. We're going to save it. Uh, this particular software, I'll make that window a little smaller so whenever it pops up you can actually see. Um, the software automatically changes it to disc 2 because it know it's smart enough to know 1 and then 2 is next. So. You don't even really have to type in a new name or anything. I'm going to go disk 3 and hope for no drama. <clears throat> the nice thing about these uh, the nice thing about these these disk images is you can mount them in DOSBox. Um, the only problem is I haven't figured out a way to mount multiple discs like if you're installing a game uh, that's uh, multiple discs and you have multiple images I, don't, I haven't figured out a way to, to mount like the second disc and then the third disc and yada 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 <clears throat> you make that little ultimate seven box a little bigger for you guys I'm just having fun messing with this 
open broadcasting thing. I think it's really neat. You can do some cool stuff. <clears throat> Plus, Joe, I've got uh, documentation here that my desks do work. <laughs> so, for everyone to see if they want to see it. Joe asked if there were any advantages or disadvantages to this particular format, and I'm not sure because I'm not... I don't think I'm technically minded enough to know, like... Um, I know some folks in the chat are not fans of, of... You know, this is something Stuart may actually know more about. Like, I think... Uh, when I brought this up before, Joe, uh, they were talking about Kyra Flux and all that kind of stuff, but I just... Number one, I don't have uh, I don't have the money for it. And number two, I don't think I have like the need for that. Like these these disc images are working fine for me. Like I don't need um, that hardcore of uh, imaging software, really. All I'm looking for is just backups of my stuff. I don't need um, anything that major. We're on uh, this disc four. Disc four, we haven't had a single blip. Uh, so we're doing good. I like this format because it's it's just simple, you know? It's like, you download the shareware thing, it works every time. Kyra, Jess Stewart says, Chiroflex is an analog copy. The images that Joel is making are digital copies. Yeah, like a Chiroflex, correct me if I'm wrong, Cryoflux. Uh, it actually reads the magnetic data, Stuart. As long as there's no copy protection on floppies, this works. Yeah, I ran into some issues with some old, old older Sierra, Sierra stuff that had some copy protection on it that I couldn't get good images from. <clears throat> Joe says, I do not believe there's an official consensus for preservation type, Stuart, but if there's a copy protection, it wouldn't be carried over into the images. <clears throat> this four, no issues. Proud of the old Ultima 7. This is my, one of my favorite games in my collection. Um, disc 5. Haven't had to uh, do the old uh, uh, cotton swab and alcohol trick like I did last the last time. Let's hope I don't have to do that. Yeah, man, I can. Uh, Joe says this is going faster than he thought. I can, I can back up a game in like a few few minutes. Um, I have an older computer down here under my desk that's got a five and a quarter inch drive, and I've, it's got Windows XP on it. And uh, I'm running the same program on that one, and that's how I've been doing. Uh, Stewart says these modern disk drives are way faster than the old ones. This is a uh, USB 2.0, um, uh, just a cheapy three and a half inch floppy drive. Uh, it's been a good one. <clears throat> I don't get a lot of read errors using this thing, so I think I got lucky. Stuart, please, or let's see, Joe, please point out that this is better than download images because you lower your odds for malware versions. Holy crap, yes. Um, I was going to write a blog post about uh, uh, abandonware and how abandonware doesn't actually exist. Like, abandonware, uh, if you're on a website that says something is abandonware, there's no such thing as abandonware. Uh, there, there may be license holders who don't care enough to sue you, but... Uh, Abandonware isn't a thing, and if you're downloading uh, any illegal copies, there's always a chance that you're going to get some kind of malware. Stuart, I wasted a lot of time today creating a Windows XP virtual machine in VirtualBox. Unfortunately, it doesn't support DirectX 7 hardware acceleration. So the game I was trying to play didn't work. Huh. I didn't know that. I don't think I've ever tried to put one as XP. I tried to 
I tried to make a virtual machine for uh, Windows 95 once. Joe, do you check your images for malware? Or do you scan the floppies of AV before you start? I don't scan them. Stuart, sometimes original hardware is best. Yeah, like... Um, I find that the, the old 3.5 inch drive I got in this old computer uh, will sometimes read this that this drive won't. And I know I just said that I don't get read errors, but if it's like particularly dirty or maybe like a little scratchy or something, this this older drive does seem to be able to get data off it a lot easier than this USB one does. I'll check Facebook here real quick and see if there's any any messages. Joe says, if you bought it on eBay, who knows what viruses may be on them. It would be great to do a follow-up video. Yeah, I certainly hope there's no viruses on it. I have installed the game using these discs, so... Let's see, did I do disc 5? Let me double check this real quick. I'll give you guys a peek into my uh, disc images folder so you can see what all games I got. Um, keep it on an external hard drive. Floppy images. Ultima 7. I've been a busy uh, beat. Yep, I did this 5. Alright, I got this 7 in there now. I'll open that one up. Maybe that was maybe that was that one that I just did. I'll redo it anyway. There we go. <clears throat> Stewart. Amazingly, the game I was trying to run ended up working in Windows 10, but most Windows 95 games will not run because they are 30-bit apps. And Windows 10 is 64-bit. Kudos to Interplay. Yep. So I like to keep my um, I like to keep my Windows XP machine at hand over here, so I can run. Uh, that's where I can run my 32-bit and my 16-bit stuff. Alright, this is the last disc for Ultima 7. I do have Forge of Virtue here, which I will do. And then I'm going to move on to Serpent Isle, which I haven't done either yet. So we'll just have the complete Ultima experience. Most of my Ultima games are on five and a quarter. Yeah, so far no air is, is, uh, is amazing, Joe. Like I, The last time I did this, I was getting errors like crazy. I wish that file had not been deleted because I, I did a lot of cool stuff in that one. Um, I'd say a solid 50% of the games that I've done uh, uh, images for have had some sort of errors on the disk that I've been able to get through. Um, I've gotten the data off of them. But these 3.5 inch disks are not I'm not gonna last forever, man. I put my little floppy disk back in the paper here. The We Create Worlds Origin paper. All right, now we'll do uh, Forge Virtue. I guess I'll just keep that in that same folder. Yeah, like I must have gotten really lucky on this this particular copy. Um, I'm glad that those discs work because of all the games in my collection that that work, I'm glad it was that's one of them.
One of these days I'm going to do one of those uh, Frankenstein discs where I swap the magnetic thing out live. Uh, on a disc that doesn't work anymore if I have the data. Seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy. Um, Joe says it's a later title. I worry for my nineteen eighty-four disc in the earlier. Yeah. Like these guys here, they're like right on the cusp, you know. Um, all right, Ultima 7, Forge of Virtue. All right, we're batting a thousand here, guys. And that is the end of my Ultima 7 discs. Mission successful. Try to take really good care of my discs. There we go. <clears throat> Back in the box. Let's see. I got so much crap in this box that it doesn't fit but a certain way. You have to make sure it's and then Joe, I got my magazine bag here. This is a magazine-sized uh, Mylar bag, which is perfect for these origin, these larger origin-sized boxes. As you see, fits in there like a glove. Keep that black on the front from uh, not uh, not scraping off. <clears throat> So I'm gonna put this somewhere where the cats won't get on it, and then we're gonna do serpent serpent isle. <clears throat> and I think there's a silver seed disc in here. Joe just said do silver seed. I think there's one in there. <clears throat> yeah, but you need to get the good bags. Uh, since I was just talking about the bags, Joe says that he bought some bags, but his were lousy. If you get the if you get the cheap ones, they'll uh, they'll split on the sides. Yeah, when you try to stick them in there. Boop. Serpent off. Fancy graphic. Uh, center that up there. <laughs> Stewart says, do Drash now. Yeah, that would love to. Wish I could. The funny thing about Drash is, is that uh, Stu's Reviews did a, a, a fascinating video you should check it out about uh, running Atari 400 and 800 games on cassette tape on a modern computer. And uh, not many people know, and I learned from watching his video, that you can make digital digital files of the audio on those cassette tapes and then play them using an emulator on a modern computer. So I don't know if that's a possibility with Drash, but uh, I bet it is if you can find you a... Uh, what computer did Drash come out on? Was it a Vic? something I don't remember but anyway yeah if you could get the if you could record the the data off of that sucker you could probably play it on a, on a an emulator <clears throat> check out that video yeah Vic 20 there you go uh, check out that video because um, uh, I don't know what the state of backing up tape data is like the, this disk data, is, you can see it's not sure, it's not very easy, it's not very hard, excuse me, it's not very hard to get this data off of here really because disk drives are still pretty common, but getting that tape data off of a, off a data cassette tape, um, and Stuart shows how to do that too uh, in the video using uh, some free software in OS. All you gotta do is hook up, the, hook up the tape player to your computer and let it rip. So uh, give that, watch that video and definitely back up your tapes if you if you got them because it's just audio you know and um, that's the one way to make sure it, it keeps going uh, I'll do the same thing here that I did last time uh, show the stuff before I get started uh, Serpent Isle I've also got the paper deal on the discs which 
I love these things. I, I always look for origin games with that paper thing. Uh, there's a copy of Silver Seed in here. I have a box Silver Seed, but it's sealed and I ain't opening it. I ain't opening it because I got these discs. So don't don't expect any unshrinking videos of my Silver Seed. Um, <clears throat> Stuart, uh, let's see. Joe says, Stu, do you know if there are any other computer emulators like this Big Twenty C sixty four? Uh, I got a the cloth map in here. Um, uh, Origins nineteen ninety four CD exchange upgrade policy, which is weird because this isn't on CD, but whatever. Uh, disc exchange form. Uh, registration card. This is the sheet that I'm missing in the Ultimate Seven, which is the stop read me first sheet. This is the one thing I'm missing on my freaking Ultimate Seven. The Ultimate 7 sheet was on white paper, though. The Silver Seed one was on yellow. <clears throat> I got a installation quick start guide. This is the Silver Seed quick start guide, actually. <clears throat> uh, Serpent, I'll read this first. I don't know what this is. Version 1.02 release notes. What is this, Joe? 1.02 release notes? Is this from a patch disc or something? Stewart says, basically everything has been emulated. I think there's a TRS-80 and Speccy emulators that will read live off a of connected external tape. How about that? He hasn't checked every platform yet, but will. <clears throat> yeah, it just seems weird that they'd have two README first sheets in here. This says Serpent Isle on it, so this is definitely a Serpent Isle one. But it does say 1.02 release notes, so maybe this is from a patch disk or something. I don't have the patch disc. Uh, this is the install guide. Um, got a uh, Serpent Owl quick reference sheet. We got a. <clears throat> this looks like an Electronic Arts catalog. Uh, we got the uh, famous Planet catalog here. And then we got the Serpent Owl Beyond the Serpent Pillars manual. So that's everything that's in my box. I don't think I'm missing anything, but uh, I could be. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I am. We'll start with the silver seed since it's on top. First. And here we have an example of a disc, shame on me, that is not copy protected. Copy protect that sucker. Only cavemen don't copy protect their discs. <clears throat> This is why you need to name the images with the version numbers. You know what, though? I don't know what the version number is. Does it say on the disk? Hmm. No, it doesn't. I don't know. I guess I could install it and see. No. All right, Serpent Isle, let's open that sucker up and let's hope that we don't have any major issues. They're not Serpent, yeah, no, uh, Silver Seed. That's what I'm doing, Silver Seed. Expansion pack for Serpent Isle. While this is going, I'm gonna run and get the uh, Ultima 8 box, which I forgot to get before I started, so I'll be right back. <clears throat> Sorry I'm clearing my throat a lot. I've had I had like a sinus infection or something and it um, it's been going on for like three weeks and this I just it just won't go away. None of these discs are copy protected. Who are these assholes who don't copy protect their discs? Alright. Save new folder. Ultima 7 Serpent Owl. If 
put part two in there. Serve it all. Copy that. You know, I, uh, I was asking myself the, the last time I did this, like, I said I do this for uh, backing up my own data, which is understandable. But, um, like, what good is this? What good is this stuff that I'm doing uh, otherwise? Uh, the examined life. Did I miss the backup process? No, you're. I'm right in the middle of it, buddy. We're uh, we're rolling here. Shiba D. I'm just checking one thing here because I uh, uh, I didn't name that that particular file Silver Seed, so I'll correct that here real quick. Um, Silver Seed. There we go. Okay, sorry for that. All right, Silver Seed done. Good to go. Have the data. Yeah, examine life. Phew, I was worried there for a second. <laughs> yeah, I would hate for anyone to miss this. Exciting. Uh, what a way to spend a Tuesday. Huh? Disc 1, Serpent Isle. Here we go. Excitement. I got my Ultimate, Ultimate 8 here. This is the cool box. This is the only box worth having if you're getting to Ultimate. Uh, the extension is... Uh, Joe asked what the extension type was on these files. It's .ima. I think that's what it is. Hang on, let me check. Um, properties. Yep, winimage.ima uh, file. There's the properties on it. It's exactly the same size as the disks. 1.474560. So it's not compressed or anything. It's just the files. Examine Life says, I really should do this one of these days, but it's so much work. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of... You know what? What I'm doing wrong here is... Uh, these are all stored on my external drive, but if my house went up on fire or something, everything would be like lost. I wouldn't have anything. So I need to put this stuff out in the cloud somewhere. Yeah, there's, uh, you'll see on this window, if you can see it, Joe, uh, you probably can't see it. Well, maybe you can down there in the bottom right. You'll see it says compressed image, <laughs> compressed image file, IMZ. And uh, that's not, I don't, maybe the IMZs are fine. I don't know. I just don't like the idea that the data is compressed personally. Um, disk one. I'll do an IMA file. There's also a virtual floppy image thing down here. It's called VFD. I don't I have no clue what that is. Um, here we go. Alright, disc one done. No, no drama here, folks. We're rolling. Disc two. Look, Joe, this is another one of those PK and Zip ones, so that, that must be way more common than I thought. <clears throat> that over a little bit. 17, 18, 19. Rocket and roll in here. Yeah, it must be. I know that you can, um, I think you can convert these IMAs into ISO files, I think. Um, I don't know what the benefit would be since, for me, um, uh, DOSBox will mount either one, so I don't know if there's any reason to do that or not. My personal goal in this isn't necessarily 
for preservation uh, in a broader sense because I don't know like I don't want to I can't pirate this stuff I can't just give it to people so I don't know like I don't know what good it is for anyone but me as far as keeping the data I mean I can keep my discs rejuvenated for as long as I'm, a, I'm as long as I own them Two, no problems. Moving on to disc three. I need to do an unboxing of these sometime, a proper unboxing of them. Especially that Ultima 7 because. Uh, I've, I've searched for Ultima 7 a whole lot of times on eBay and there aren't many copies for sale out there that are as complete as that one that I just did. Minus that one stupid cheat. This is a pretty hefty game back then, man. Seven floppy disks. I have a, uh, I have a copy of uh, Return to Zork in there that's on floppy disk. I had the floppy version because uh, I don't think the place that I was buying games from back then had the CD one, and it's on 12 floppy disks. <clears throat> that's a hairy install uh, procedure there. Disk three, no issues. Moving on to disk four. Checking Facebook. 24, 25, 26. It's like the PC gods are smiling on me tonight. I tell you, I must have bought Ultima games from uh, solid sources because I haven't had many issues with these. <clears throat> make sure the rest of these are copy protected. Cloth map is, uh, well, it's pretty cool, I guess. It's not Britannia, but it'll do. Alright, save. What disc was this? sucks because it defaults to IMZ every time and uh, I always have to remember to change it. Disc 5. Sad that this is the way I choose to spend my evenings. I can't think of anything nerdier than doing this. <clears throat> Painting miniatures. Painting miniatures is probably nerdier than this, but it's pretty damn nerdy. What I would love would be if there was some kind of a Data Collective. <laughs> the Examine Life says, watching this, hey, watching this or doing this, take your pick. Alright, disc five, 
That's good to go. I guess there's two questions. One, why am I doing this? And two, why am I streaming it? And I can't answer either one of those. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's relaxing. It's kind of relaxing. It could be kind of stressful, too, if the discs aren't working. I haven't had any drama tonight, though. Yep, the dates on the files. Joe asked me what the dates on the files were. Uh, it says modified March 15th, 1993. <clears throat> yep, uh, 3-15-93. Joe probably has the gold masters for this. Uh, Joe, I keep I keep saying Joe. Uh, Joe, the Joe I'm talking to in the chat is Joe from uh, who owns the Origin Museum. So uh, these games in particular are of great interest to him. You can check uh, if you check my channel. Uh, if you like watching this sort of stuff, uh, definitely check out. I've got a, a playlist on the my playlists on the channel. Of there's called uh, the um, <laughs> Joe. I'm gonna mention the uh, the Gold Masters, and Joe says I do. I'm looking through them right now. <laughs> um, I have a, a playlist on the channel for Joe's uh, uh, Origin Museum untubbing videos. Which if you want to watch something truly fascinating, go check those out. Um, the guy's got more mint sealed copies of Origin games than anyone I've ever seen. And more interesting things than that even, like items uh, pertaining to the creation of these games and artwork and <clears throat> all kinds of cool stuff. But yeah, I do have that, check out that playlist sometime, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, he's literally got a box sitting in front of me, he just keeps pulling out stuff. You know. Uh, stuff that any PC game collector would uh, kill to have. Alright guys, we're on disc 7 and it's not looking like we're going to have any problems with these. So I think Ultima 7 Part 2 Serbanal is in the can, so to speak. Joe, you should do another untubbing, unless you ran out of tubs. Oh, look at this. We got our first error, folks. Disc error on track 78, head 1. Sector not found. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Joe just said you have excellent luck, and then bam, right at 97% I get an error. Uh, usually, if you just hit retry a couple times, it'll pick up the data. There we go. Had to hit retry four times before I finally got that data. <clears throat> so that tells me that this disc seven of my Serpentile is starting to fade. And that is sad. Either that or there was some dust on there and the uh, drive head just wiped it away. That's the other option. <laughs> Could be either one, but uh, as well as these discs have been working, I would put my money on that, that the date on that disc is probably just now starting to go. So that's what we that's why we spend our Tuesday evenings backing the stuff up, folks. And I need to be careful because I'm tearing that paper. Uh, 
these uh, these paper things are well for one thing this thing is like ancient and I don't know if I'm gonna, I should probably just throw it throw it in there without putting the disc in it but let's try it this way put them all in there and then put the last disc in Yes, uh, I, I'm sure, uh, Joe asked if I'm sure that it copied correctly. Uh, I'm sure that it copied correctly because in the past, uh, whenever that happens, I uh, will write it to a blank floppy disk and then try it. And uh, they almost always, they always work. I'm not going to say almost always because they always work. Um, so the data is good. That's why whenever I get an error like that, I don't, I never hit abort because the data is in memory, like it's got the data. So once you hit 97% and you hit an error, don't hit abort and get rid of the data that you've already got. Um, I pull a disk out, if it's dirty, I'll clean it, but you don't ever want to lose the progress that you've made because uh, you, the, I've had it before where you hit abort and you put it back in there and it gives you errors on the ones that, on the data that you've already gotten. So, <clears throat> my paper, uh, deal here, Joe is fixing the is falling apart. It's probably the last time I'll ever take those discs out of that. I'll play with a different copy instead next time. But I got the data, so that's all that matters. All right, put this in my little baggie. These Ultra Seven Part Two boxes are also prone to the the print rubbing off, so. <clears throat> So I like these bags. There we go. What's this dude talking about here? I once had a copy of Space Quest 2 that had a surface error. I used Norton Disk Doctor to fix it as best as possible. It worked fine, except in one place Roger Wilco goes unconscious and dreams he's Leisure Suit Larry with a suit regenerating large amounts of static electricity instead of that it said you have you have a dream that and then it said Durgan Avis on the screen like a million times and you had to keep hitting enter to scroll through the million times that it said and then the game continued I found out later that Avis Durgan was the girlfriend of the programmer and he used her name as an encryption key or something whoa that's and that they started doing that because you used Norton Disk Doctor to fix the disk that's fascinating. Absolutely wild. Uh, be right back. I need a knife. <clears throat> Put the stupid tape on these bags, and I can never get the tape off. So I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop taping them closed. Just leave them open on top. Stewart, because some of the code was on a bad sector of the disk and couldn't be recovered. Oh, so that prompted the game to start spamming the name. I get you. tape off of here. I don't like to leave tape on stuff whenever I'm <clears throat> taking things out of bags. Ultimate. We're moving on. I think this will be the last one I do tonight, guys. 
Oh look, it's my copy of Lost Veil vale in the bag. Look, Joe, it's my Lost Veil. Vale. Ooh. Of course I'm joking, I don't really have a copy of Lost Veil. Vale. <clears throat> uh, that is the speech pack though, right there. I have multiple copies of that speech pack. Uh, the ultimate speech pack is not I wouldn't say it's rare, but it's not like hard it's not like super easy to find either in the box. You can see it's really hard to find a good box because the boxes are so uh, crappy and flimsy that uh, they often look like flat. Mm -hmm. Uh Stewart just said something I'm not going to read out loud. Um, uh, disc one, Ultimate Eight Pagan uh, game that caught a lot of crap when it first came out. Uh, did I not save that last one? I guess I didn't. Yep, this seven. That would have sucked. Get through that whole thing and then not save the seventh one. There we go. <clears throat> I get these bags at Walmart, these like druggy bags, I guess, the <laughs> bags that pot you do guys use. And these things are perfect for floppy disks. You can get about three of them in there, and I just load them up. <clears throat> Love those things. You can cop, cut the tops off of them, and they're like uh, they're like standard uh, floppy disk holders. But I just leave the I just leave the thing on the top there because. I don't really care. Plus, it keeps dust out of there. It's kind of nice. <clears throat> you know, Joe, you were asking about virus scanning and whatnot. Um, you can, using this Win Image program, I can open the images that I just made and just drag the files into a folder, and then I could scan them from there. Using a virus scanner, just scan the files directly. Disk one, no issues. New folder, ultimate eight. Pagan. Joe says that would be wise to scan the entire directory. Can't be too careful. Yeah. <clears throat> I, you know, what would happen if you installed a virus in DOSBox? I don't guess that the virus would be able to function properly since... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what would happen there. <clears throat> I guess you just delete DOSBox and start over again. <clears throat> Disc two. I've had one error tonight. Just one. Not too shabby. Stewart says it depends on what kind of virus a boot sector virus wouldn't work because yeah because I guess there's no boot there's no boot sector <clears throat> oh I'm recording this by the way at the same time so if YouTube screws me again and deletes this I'll have a backup Stewart says, uh, this is interesting, uh, some other type of virus may be able to escape DOSBox since it interacts directly with your hard drive. That's true. I hadn't thought of that. <clears throat> uh, 
Hey, Pagan just two. Good go. Move on to disc three. How many discs was Pagan? Um, eight, it looks like. I'll go over what's in the box after I get done. I kind of forgot to do that. That's why I used to mount ISO images. Um, when does Tenel mount it natively? Um, so I've been, um, I've also been doing uh, ISO images of CDs. So I'm going to, maybe I'll stream that too. I know that's super exciting too, but. <clears throat> Stewart says Joel is the expert in mounting things. You have no idea. Maybe he does. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, Windows 10 mounts ISOs uh, natively, so I just, you can just right, well, I think you just right click them and mount them as a drive. Stuart, Joe says ooh, and I agree. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to change my fancy graphic. Damn it. There we go. It's a, it's a professional broadcast here, folks. We're all about professionalism. Big box PC game collectors. Nothing but professional here. <clears throat> Disc three. Can you guys hear it go bubbling whenever it goes bubbling? Let me, uh, that'll add a bit of excitement for you. Let me just make it to where you can hear that. All right, put these three back in here. Assuming that this goes well, and it looks like it's going to, um, I guess the stream will probably be ending in about eh, 15 minutes or so. Alright, disc four. Oh, you can hear the drive noise? So Joe was saying a minute ago he couldn't hear the drive. I should move the drive closer to the microphone so you can hear it better. You can always tell when the disc is about to not read because it'll start it'll start grinding and sound terrible. Huh. Yeah, I can see. Uh, I'm. I can see the mic, the volume on the mic, and I can see it, it, like bouncing whenever the drive. Eh, I guess it's picking it up. when you when it looks like the drive's done and you hit you let the, you get the disc out and then it starts trying to read it again it pisses me off I hate that all right we're on disc five. Oh, yeah I need to save it uh, save <clears throat> nice backer come here come on oh, cat Where's Anatoly when you need him? Purrs. You're my disc. You're my disc backup buddy. You're a nerd. Nerd cat. Nerdy. Yeah, I wish there was a. I think I was saying this earlier, and I didn't really finish my thought. But I wish there was like a collective of like disc images and data. That I could put this stuff somewhere and uh, 
people who need it could legally get it. That's the that's the thing is legally getting it. You know. Um, it would make all this work much more meaningful if there was a way to share the data. It almost got me that time, but I waited. There we go. Disc six. Joe, you should uh, set up a live stream and go through some just go through some discs and, and take a look at stuff. interesting these discs don't have a label on them they have blank label hmm. yeah because you got all kinds of cool stuff on those discs artwork and files and things yeah random tub archiving <laughs> yeah, you guys are gonna hear every time my Facebook dings now because uh, I got the I got the desktop audio going to the going to the thing. Yeah, Stewart says blank label usually means bootleg. Now, that's the first thought that came to my mind whenever I saw that. But these does look pretty legit to me. Date modified three fifteen nineteen ninety four. <clears throat> the six good to go. I've installed the game using these discs, so that the game does work. I guess I shouldn't be so shocked that I'm not getting any errors. Joe says there's data that I backed up from Electronic Arts that I never even went through. That would be an exciting show. It would be. <clears throat> Alright, just seven. I keep forgetting to save these discs. I'm glad it warns me beforehand. I have exabyte tape backup drives and no idea what data is on them. Do you have a drive that'll read those tapes, Joe? Exabyte tape backup drives. Man, that's a. Joe says, I did years ago, but... I've already ISO'd the images. So you have... Oh, that's cool. So you could open up those ISO images and pick around through the files if you wanted to. Are they uh, Microsoft format disks or are they like... Are they Unix? Seven's in the can. One more. Joe says, no idea to my Linux comment, or Unix, I mean, Unix comment. He says, but the labels say stuff like, dot, dot, dot. <clears throat>
cat is staring at me. I don't know why cats like to stare at people. X by U7 German 62492. Ultima 7 Projects Archive 52292 Exabyte. Wow. Did uh, did Electronic Arts hang on to any of the stuff um, from before Electronic Arts bought them, or were they just backing up stuff? Post Electronic Arts mm -hmm. purchase. This gate. <clears throat> Unlabeled Exabyte Serpent Isles. Joe says, Yes, this is it. That's the entirety of Ultima 8 done. And we'll get the speech pack. I have not, Joe says I have nothing before EA buyout. What happened to that stuff? Do you think Richard still got it or? This is Ultimate Eight Speech Pack Disc One that I'm doing at the moment. Maybe, maybe Origin didn't. Um, Joe says no idea to that last question. Maybe they didn't keep backups as strictly as they would have after Electronic Arts came through. Like Electronic Arts probably would have been more interested in protecting their intellectual property. <clears throat> ah, ultimate speech pack. No disc labels either. These, these are, uh, as Stuart says, probably bootlegs. <coughs> They're not bootlegs. continue this ultimate trend next time and uh, do my um, uh, ultimate underworld disc next uh, on the next one whenever I do this again <laughs> you know what I don't have that I want is I don't have the uh, ultimate underworld demo disc no not the under ultimate Underworld demo disc I mean I do have that the uh, screensaver disc that um, origin screensaver I can't remember what it's called now I need to find one of those discs. They're kind of hard to come by. <clears throat> Next time on Big Box PC Game Collectors Disc Backups. Ultima Underworld 1 and 2. Stuart, you, Stuart's got an FX, yeah, Origin FX screensaver. That's, that's what I was trying to think of. I have a few boxes that that's missing out of. <clears throat> Unfortunately. I'd be happy with just one, though. And just to have it. Ultimate Speech Pack, one of the biggest wastes of money uh, in computer software. Uh, <laughs> what a useless thing. Like, it just, 
literally added a few like the guardian makes some pop some jokes at you every once in a while and that's it Oh, Stuart doesn't have an Origin FX screensaver. Okay. Oh, you suck then. Uh, the joke there being that uh, Stuart has just about every game known to man. He's probably more sad and depressing than, than most of us. That's it. Speech pack done. Boop. Suck her out of there. <clears throat> they made speech packs for a bunch of games. I think there's a Strike Commander one. There's a. I think Wing Commander 2 had one. I have the Wing Commander 2 one back there. I don't have the Strike Commander one yet. <clears throat> Joe just linked something here. What is this? Joe sent me an ISO file. Let's see. I shall try to mount this, Joe. Let's see. Where did I where did I save that? <clears throat> Disc one um, mount. Uh, Joe, it says the disk image file is corrupted. Couldn't mount file in Windows ten. Uh, Stuart says Wing Commander Privateer has a speech pack. That's cool. I need to look for that. I bet you Privateer did, because they came out at around the same time as some of the stuff. <clears throat> yeah, it says corrupted file, Joe. I don't know what. I don't know what you can. I wonder. I wonder if I could open that file up in an ISO program. <clears throat> I have an ISO thing on here somewhere. Maybe I uninstalled it. I bet you I don't have it anymore. Yeah, I got rid of it. Oh well. <laughs> Alright, let me go through this stuff and then I'll get off of here and let you guys get back to your evenings. Uh, so I got the disc, of course, which you just went through painstakingly. And uh, I got the Ultimate Map, which is the most useless of all the Origin Maps, but it is beautiful. Uh, I got nothing against the way it looks, but absolutely useless as far as uh, using it in the game, unfortunately. I got the uh, Ultima 8 coin. I got the Pentology clue book here. We got Chronicles of Pagan uh, manual. Uh, Ultimate 8 Pagan Play Guide. We got uh, Install Guide. We got Speech Pack Install Guide. I have a copy of the Speech Pack in the box too. This just happened to be in the box. This box. Um, the Origin, this catalog that came with like every game. Like this Planet one is in almost every game that they did. This one does have a catalog that's got some extra stuff in it. <laughs> Stuart says I like when he reads my comments and laughs even though he doesn't repeat them because uh, Stuart said that I should try remount, try mounting the disc in reverse cowgirl because he's a dirty old man um, what is this origin there's another origin catalog thing in here and we got um, CD-ROM exchange policy again which makes some sense because Ultimate for sure came out on CD and uh, registration card. And that's all that's in the box. 
And I put all this stuff back in there and then we'll shut her down for tonight. For another exciting episode of backing up discs. I don't know that it gets much more exciting than this, folks. If you're watching, thanks for joining me. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? Backing up history like this. I like it. Uh, I can't remember if I saved this or not. Yeah, I did. Okay. Alright, guys. Let me turn this off and put my little fancy logo back up there. That's all she wrote. Uh, thanks for watching. And I'll put an archive of this up there if anyone wants to see it. And uh, we'll see you next time.